Up here is Greg Zipidelli, competition director at Stuart Haas Racing, as well as Max Pappas, interim driver of the number 14 Rush Truck Centers, Mobile One Chevrolet. And guys, we'll start off, obviously, uh, uh, an adversity-filled week for, for Stuart Haas Racing. But, Greg, if you can just kind of reiterate, uh, I guess, the, the plans for Stuart Haas Racing, at least this weekend, and, and Max, just follow up on the, on the opportunity that you have here today. Yeah, obviously, with the uh, circumstances uh, we're dealing with, um, Tony out of the car. Max is here for us this weekend. Um, he had done some road course testing uh, uh, recently, uh, about two weeks ago, in the 14 car. Um, so um, there was a little bit of a database built. A um, little communication had already been started, and, and uh, we felt like that was, uh, you know, our best uh, best option for this weekend. Um, he's, Max has a lot of experience here, and in, in, you know, like I said, road racing. So. Um, obviously, a difficult situation for everybody at Stuart Haas this weekend, but um, you know it's a situation we're in, and we'll we'll, we'll do our best. And Max, uh, Greg alluded to it. You ha you have a sports car win here. You you were here not too long ago in a sports car as well. Just talk a little bit about the opportunity with the 14 car and your history here at the Glen. Yeah, first of all, you know it's great to be here with all of you guys, and uh, I hope uh, that Tony will be back soon. You know, because uh, that's actually his car, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, just an honor to be able to be called uh, by organization like Stuart Haas and uh, and fill the shoes of uh, Tony. Uh, it was uh, you know not really a dream come through, but it was more like a, a recognition towards uh, all the work that I've done so far in my career, and I feel that uh, uh, I have a lot of confidence uh, to go out there and uh, and uh, give them a solid results. You know. Obviously, if I would have been uh, maybe 25 years old, you know, I would have been, you know, maybe right now sitting on the toilet for how nervous I was. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess that, uh, you know, now I'm 30 plus 12, so <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for the questions. Uh, D Watkins Glen staff does have a microphone. And again, state your name and affiliation, please. We'll go ahead and uh, right over here with, with Holly. I think she had her hand up first. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. I have a question for both of you. Uh, do you have any more of an update on Tony since having the second surgery? And have you spoken to him? Uh, you know, if you can just give us a little bit of your interaction with him. And uh, I'll let you answer, and then I'll ask Max. Yeah, um, I saw him Wednesday night before his, his surgery. Um, talked to him, texted yesterday after. Everything went well, uh, as good as could be expected. Um, it's going to be a day-by-day -day situation right now, just you know, with infections and things of that nature. So, um, hopefully, it'll turn into a week-by-week -week here. Probably Sunday or Monday, we'll know a lot more. Um, right now, um, it, it's a week-by-week -week deal. Um, we'll uh, see what doctors have to say at the beginning of the week, and um, you know, we'll go from there. Obviously, Michigan, um, Bristol, and those things we're looking uh, right now for who's going to be in the car and trying to work those those things out. So. Um, you know, as far as that goes, he was in great spirits, um, as good spirits as he could be. And he, he, he was a little bit down. He felt like he, he's let a lot of people down. Um, the, the, the world is fans. Um, so I know he's, um, you know, all the support that he's gotten from, from, from the fans and, and the racers here, I know has, uh, has helped him a lot. Um, uh, we talked about that. And it's, it's, it's cool, the, the outreach that, uh, that this, this area has, um, has given him, you know. And Max, um, what would you have been doing this weekend if you weren't here racing? And um, could you talk about, uh, you know, this is going to be a very high-profile uh, ride for you, for sure. Yeah, I think it's more sensational for you guys. You know, for me, I love the opportunity. And uh, I love that you guys talk about it. And uh, in one way, I, I feel that uh, uh, what I, you know, I would have been in Elkhart Lake, you know, uh, racing uh, the Ferrari, and actually, uh, you know, that was going to be the plan actually to do both, you know, but I, at the end, you know, Remo Ferri Racing decided that it would have been better just for me to stay focused on, on this deal here and not flying around. So, I mean, uh, thanks to them as well for that, you know. I, I, even if I thought that would have been a pretty cool deal to run both. And because uh, I kind of feel a little bit like, a, in, you know, old style generation guy in a way. Like for me, I, I admire people like Mario Andretti, people like AJ Foyt, people like uh, Tony Stewart that uh, can drive anything any day. And, 
and I text Tony a few times. Uh, you know, obviously, you know he's uh, you know he's you know he's doing his own deal. He's trying to recover. But I can tell you guys this. You know, watching and listening how much uh, love there is for this guy in the sport, uh, it's it's really overwhelming. You know, like everyone uh, really loves him for real. You know, and uh, and but at the same time. I feel that that love has been spread around uh, towards me driving as well. And uh, I felt uh, really good about it, you know, like uh, people were excited about me being in the car and uh, everyone said, you know, just go out there and represent him in the best way you can. And uh, that's kind of what I feel like, you know, I'm going to go out there, do the best I can. And uh, I know my ability, I have a lot of confidence in my own abilities. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you're asking me if this is something that's going to change my career. At 42 years old, you know, you, I don't think too many things change your career anymore. It's more just a satisfaction, in a way. You know, it's more like, a, you know, I woke up this morning, I told my kids, I say, guys, Papi's going to go out there and drive for Tony Stewart. That's something we're going to talk about in the year to come. <laughs> Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Greg, obviously there's a lot of speculation about who might be in the car, and that'll be like wildfire until you actually announce it but are you getting closer to being able to say whether it's going to be a rotating cast of people and can you talk about some of the challenges you know with races just a week away and two weeks away what you're going to do we would love to put somebody in the car um until tony comes back um the problem we're faced with next week is if you look at the schedules and you lay out the nationwide schedule in mid-ohio and uh, us in michigan they, they don't match up very well so if somebody would do two half-assed jobs or we can try and find somebody to uh that, that's out of the norm and put them in the car and try to go to michigan and do the best we can um and then hopefully maybe bristol we could pick up with with one person that maybe be able to do the rest of it and obviously be a nationwide driver um there's a couple of really good people you know that we've talked to there's an awful lot of people have reached out um and and uh, obviously a lot of people would be, would love to get in that car but um right now we just we're, we're taking it slow um we spent a lot of time on this week um you know obviously we had a lot of stuff with our sponsors and we're trying to keep them as and as involved as, as we can because obviously they're they're very important partners to to Stuart haas and our and our future so you know we're trying to uh to weed out give them some options and get their input um and um you know just try and do everything in the right way and uh uh, aside from racing the car, how soon do you see Tony stepping in to help make decisions and run the ship from where he's at, uh, being the leader of the, of the group? Um, he, he's been involved. I mean, he was, you know, in and out uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but, but you know, we, we shot him a, a, a text, and, and I, I talked to him about Max and a couple of options, and, and um, he was uh, he was he was. He was all about Max getting in and, and, and doing it, didn't question it, um, was was actually sounding pretty excited about it. So, um, I, and, and in all honesty, to answer your question, we're waiting for him to kind of, I'm thinking tonight, tomorrow, I'll be able to spend a little more time talking to him and, and, and get his input um, as, as well. So um, we've got a little bit of time before we need to make that decision. I feel like before we leave here Sunday, Monday morning, we need to know what we're doing when we go home. Um, I'll probably take all of that time to make sure we make the right decision. Um, and, and, you know, move forward from there. Jeff. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Um, you obviously know Tony maybe better than anybody, and I was wondering what you think his mentality is going to be or, or how you think it's going to be for him Sunday when he's lying there watching the race on TV. I mean, how difficult is that going to be for him when that moment actually comes? I, I think that's a a, a really – difficult moment for anybody that's been in the sport and has his race but i think you know his personality and is as much of a racer that he is i think it'll be harder on him than 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 uh, anybody else you know when you look at the consecutive starts that he's had over here um and how many races he's run and and now he can't get in his car um i, th I think that'll I, I imagine that'd be really tough on him and um you know we'll all be there and, and support him and and you know he, he it's his, still his car he's just out for for you know, temporary uh, spell. So um, we'll uh, we'll do the best we can. We're trying to keep them cheered up um, as, as a group. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, he, he he loves racing and knows, we all know that, that, that this day could be here. It's here. Now we're just going to do the best we can to uh, to navigate through, uh, you know, the obstructions that we have. And, and um, 
one day at a time. And, uh, you know, before you know it, we'll be talking about uh, him getting back in it and uh, be business as usual. Yeah. Jeff, I can tell you this, you know, from the driver's standpoint, that you are definitely not happy. You know, <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been in this situation, and you can picture it as you want, you know, you know but you don't want nobody to put his butt in your car. <laughs> nobody. And, uh, and knowing Tony for over 20 years... I just can tell you guys that uh, I really feel that something that like this that happened to him is going to be back with a lot more aggression than he has ever had. Because uh, I think that being out of the car sometimes uh, open up your eyes on a lot of little things. And uh, sometimes, you know, God makes things happen for a reason. And, uh, you know, you never know. Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Greg, what was the range of emotions for you from, I'm guessing you got a call in the middle of the night, and then you immediately have to go into what now mode while simultaneously dealing with one of your best friend's injury? Yeah, we were in Atlanta. I was sleeping. Obviously, we went down for a tire test. He was supposed to meet us there in the morning, so uh, phone started going off about 1242 or so and hasn't stopped since. Um, but, uh, I don't know. My emotions have, um, obviously was, um, my biggest concern was, was he okay? Was he going to be okay? Um, and then the reason I'm there is to try and deal with whatever circumstances, you know, get, get thrown at us. So, um, I, there, other than obviously, um, feeling bad for him and, and, and wanting to know where, where he was at. I, I don't, I haven't had a whole lot of emotions through this whole thing, to be honest with you. I've just kind of just tried to stay as focused and as level as, as I can, um, and, and do the best job that, that, that I can for, for him and, and, and Stuart House racing. Okay. Mark, Mark Ashenfelder, ESPN. Greg, is there any thought when you're focusing on who to re take over for the next races? on keeping the 14 in the owner's chase? Yeah, obviously that, that, you know, if we've got anything to fight for right now is, is, is owner's points and, 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 um, you know, uh, representing our sponsors, um, the best we can and, uh, getting that car to perform at the, at the highest level that it can for our sponsors is first and foremost. Um, we owe that to them. And then, um, obviously, um, finishing these races and, um, collecting the owner's points is obviously a, a, a very big deal. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer, for Greg. Uh, the last time Tony had a serious injury, I guess, was about 2006, and you were his crew chief, and you were crew chief, and he was the driver for an, for an organization. Um, you're now competition director director for a multi-car team. He's the team co-owner and driver. What? How has this experience been so different, and how is it different addressing one team compared to having to deal with issues regarding a whole organization? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit. Obviously, when you're when you're a crew chief, you're you're you're, you know. I always said this that I, I was paid to be selfish for the 20 car for all those years, you know, and just do whatever I felt was best for that group. Um, and um, you know, now it's 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 different. It's it's three teams, um, as from the sponsors, from the people at the shop, um, to uh, you know everybody involved. Um, obviously, there, there's 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 um, different roles and responsibilities. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still to do your best job um, and, 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 and do what you can uh, to make the situation, um, you know, just to get through the situation as, as best that we can, but can't lose focus on the other two teams. There's still responsibility um, there. There's still, um, you know, make sure that 39 um, has everything that they need to, uh, to, to, to try and make this chase um, and for Danica to continue to make progress. So, you know, it's a little bit different. Obviously, a lot of focus has been been spent here in the last couple of days, and, and over time, I think it'll, you know, it'll it'll, it'll weed back out to be, um, you know, over the whole organization. Okay, Bob. Uh, Bob Hawker, Sporting News. Uh, Greg, I mean, you talked that you know he'll be out at least for a few weeks, but no real timetable. I mean, is there any hope he could be back at Atlanta or Richmond? Because if he did, there theoretically would be a chance he could still make the chase. Yeah, I mean, I think it's real early to just to to to, to hope for that. I mean, obviously that would be best case scenario. Um, I don't know, I, honestly. I, I I mean, without getting into a whole lot of details, um, it's going to be a few weeks before we even have before we have um, 
before we can even look at that and talk about it, you know, right now it'll be a, it'll be a week to week um, prognosis on him, and uh, it'll be week to week for us as a team to uh, to try and um, put the best candidate we can in at, at, at that racetrack, and um, you know we'll go from there. Okay, we'll get close to wrapping up here, Lee. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. You, you said you're not opposed to having a variety of drivers in there. I mean, could you kind of custom tailor, you know, a driver to a track? I mean, obviously, you want consistency. Max had consistency since he tested with you guys last week. But, um, you know, would you be opposed? To, a lot of people have said Kyle Larson, but is he too young to take over a role of that magnitude this early in his career? Uh, I mean, Carl Larson obviously is uh, is an awesome race car driver, and I think we're only seeing the beginnings of uh, what he has to offer to the sport. Um, but yeah, I think he, you know, he he's at a really crucial spot in his career of of, of uh, learning everything he can and um, not getting fed to the wolves too soon. Um, would you say? Um, so, you know, I think I would prefer to put from this point on put one person in that we felt was 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 capable of, of doing a good solid job and trying to build some uh, chemistry with the crew and the and the crew chief. Um, you know, there's a lot of those little details that that that, that make up for a good day on Sunday. Is um, you know pit stops and how the driver gets in and out of the box, on and off pit road, all those things you take into account. Um, so the better you get to, the longer you get to work with someone, the better you get to know them. Um, I, I feel like. Um, better chance we have of having some consistent results. Um, but I don't know that we'll honestly be able to do that just with drivers and the drivers that we would like to put, they're all racing for a championship and we need to be respectful of, of their position, um, make sure that we don't um, hinder them in the position that they're in. So do you put the focus on the 39 so you at least have one sport race in this race? Absolutely. I mean, uh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll put as much focus on, on, on them as we can, um, and we'll do the best we can with uh, with, with the 14 um, to uh, to maintain its owner's points. Um, that I mean, that that's 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 basically what we can do, and we'll do the best we can at it.